Hello, hello, everybody. It's the top of the hour on Saturday, October 5th. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live and our show today. Today's topic is the K-12 Online Conference 2013. Uh, the show hosts are, are Peggy George, me, Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore. Actually, Peggy's also going to be presenting today. Our special guests today are the K-12 Online Conference organizers. And the website for the conference is there on the slide. Here's the live binder for today. And uh, the link that's on the slide is not live, but Peggy's going to put the link into the chat. And there's the, the live link in the chat itself. So there's the live binder that has all the resources and you can see there are numerous resources here. Uh, you get the individual pieces of it on the left-hand column in the live binder. All the shows are recorded, and the recordings are posted at this archive website that's the Archives and Resources page at live.classroom20.com. Uh, We'd like to ask you some questions. The first one is, where in the world are you logging in from? And I am right here in central Pennsylvania. You get your little tool from that second icon on the whiteboard tools panel, second one down. And you've got to click on it to place it. If it doesn't exactly go where you want it to, you can, you can click closer to your location. So usually we have people logging in from all over the world. It looks like today it's focused more on the Western Hemisphere. And here's our first polling question. And it's a yes or no question. So you use the uh, polling option that is the very last box on the right underneath your name in the participants panel at the top. You can't click on the, the question on the slide. That's not going to work. So the question is, have you ever participated in the K-12 online conference before? So go ahead and vote. And once I have a number of votes, I will post the results. And from those that have, have voted, we have almost half who have participated in past conferences. Our next polling question is also yes, no. Are you a conference presenter this year, or have you presented in a previous year? Again, a yes, green check, no is the red X. That could be, Peggy, yes. It looks like we have quite a few answers. We do have seven who didn't vote, but of those that voted, 21% have participated before, and about half haven't. And our last question, I'll have to switch the type of question. Which conference strand are you, pers are you personally most enthusiastic about? A, open learning, B, outside learning, C, leading learning, or D, building learning? Oh, there is no option up there for all. Yeah, you'd have to put that in the chat. Actually, Annette did too, Paula.
So we have some alls and we have some not sures. Let me let me publish these. So we've got some mixed results. We've got 36% for building learning, 18% for open learning, outside learning has 13% and 4% for leading learning, and 27 didn't vote. Okay. So again, today's topic is the K-12 online conference. And show hosts again are Peggy George, Lori Moffat, who that, that's me, and Tammy Moore, who thank you for doing closed captioning, Tammy. Forgot to say that earlier. And the special guests today are the K-12 online conference organizers. And I'd like to introduce Susan Van Gelder, who then will be introducing the other conference organizers. So. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide. The newbie question is, what is the K-12 online conference? So uh, either go ahead, Susan, or you can have your other presenters help answer that. Sure. Um, I've been involved with the K-12 online conference in one way or another right from the beginning. First, as a just lapping up all the information, and later on the organizing committee. So. You know, it's the to me the K-12 online conference is a little bit like the poem of the blind men and the elephant, where it's a different thing to different people. So, if you'd like to just put in the chat what it is for you, I'd be curious to those who participated, what is the K-12 online conference to you? So, I'm going to just talk a little bit of what it is for me, um, but. Uh, for me, it's been the most amazing online uh, PD that I've ever had. What's great about it is is that uh, we have people who submit presentations who work amazingly hard, and they share freely, willingly, and I get to peek into their classrooms, into their minds, and into uh, everything that they're doing at my leisure when I have the time to sit down and watch. Uh, Wes, if you'd like to add something to that, I'd be thrilled. You bet. Well, you know, K-12 Online for me has been, without a doubt, the most transformative professional development that I've ever had anywhere. And I think it's, I heard Hall Davidson say a number of years ago that when you're listening to a podcast or music or, you know, your music player, you know, how close is that to your brain? I've, I've heard so many different presenters share great ideas and stories from their classroom. And in the way that, that people present it, it has been such an intimate thing. And it's not an impersonal deal where you're just you know, hearing a vendor or hearing a product, but you're really hearing directly from people who are very passionate. It, it takes some time to get these presentations together. And so I feel like I have not only learned you know, new ideas. From I'll jump in while Wes seems to be cut off. Technology tools and inspire students and teachers, but I've been I've connected with people, and that's led to relationships that are ongoing. Are are you shoot? Was that was that whole thing cut off, or did you hear that? Uh, we got it. Oh, Wes. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. Did you get any of it, or <laughs> did you get a little bit of it? I'm not sure what <laughs> what you heard. Oh, okay, most of it. Okay, Karen says it was good. Well, yeah, I'll try to just the short summary is, you know, it's not only the chance to learn stuff and ideas, but to connect to people that you can then follow on an ongoing basis, you know, as they share on their blog and Twitter. So it's really, it, it's the ultimate PLN builder. That's what it's been for me. I'd have to agree with you, Wes, and uh, certainly some of the names that I see here in the uh, today are people that I met first through the K-12 online conference. So if we can go on to the next slide. We would really like to encourage you to share uh, the K-12 online conference with your colleagues. The flyer is available for download. And you can print it or just send the link uh, on to other people. Uh, if you don't catch it in the chat now, and uh, Peggy's just put it there, uh, you can get it later in the live binder. 
let other people know uh, about the conference because it's worth it. Wes, I think it's you. Okay, thanks for the prompt. I can't actually see the, the side note. So uh, our theme this year is transforming learning. And when we think about you know, using technology tools in the classroom, it's natural for teachers to do things that we did previously with, you know, without technology tools and then find ways to, to do those same things with technology. But our focus really is on how technology tools and, and blended learning strategies can allow us to do things that we couldn't do before and transform learning. And so that transformation aspect really is the focus of all of our strands and, and all the presentations this year. Wits, if you could talk about the different strands, uh, just mention the okay. organizers. You bet. Thank you so much for the for the prompt. Incidentally, if, if you all haven't uh, been on a, a Classroom 2.0 webinar on the iPhone, it is a great thing, but it, it is a little bit of a different experience. So the way the K-12 online conference has worked since it started in 2006 has been through an organizer team. and. The organizer team um, is composed this year of six different people, and it is pretty amazing as we're scattered all over the place. Uh, sometimes we've had folks outside of North America. Um, this year we've, we have all you know, Canadian and U.S. citizens, but we've got uh, Karen Fassenpar, who is down in Arizona, and she's heading up the open learning strand. And I, I think I first met Karen up in uh, Seattle when she was talking about open educational resources. And she was a keynote speaker uh, for us, uh, I think, last year. And so that is that is her strand. And we'll hear a little bit more about that, I think, from her. Um, I'm really excited about outside learning. And Susan Van Gelder is organizing that strand. And I'm excited about all the strands as well. But the idea of taking mobile devices and being able to be you know, uh, out and about, as we might say, uh, to bring the learning back to the classroom and you know, capture learning and, and do all kinds of things outside. Sometimes we think about, or people think about technology as being this isolating and social skill losing and you know, outdoor experience inhibiting thing. And so I think our outside learning strand is going to challenge that. Um, Jose Rodriguez, who is in Los Angeles and is a uh, is, uh, elementary, well, I should have said Susan is up in Toronto, Canada. Jose is, is uh, to the west in, in uh, Los Angeles. And he's um, organizing our, our leading learning strand, which is focused on um, not only campus principals and district administrators, but also teachers as leaders. And of course, Jose's district is just uh, rolling out iPads to everyone. And so uh, Jose couldn't be with us today, but Jose's been uh, an organizer uh, and a strand convener for a number of years. And the fourth strand is building learning. And Ginger Lumen, who is up in Kansas and works out of Hutchison, is doing building learning. And the whole maker movement and the, the idea of students as tinkerers, as, as makers, as creators, and um, you know, the, the, that whole movement really, we're having an opportunity for this strand to focus on that. So also joining our team is the, a wonderful and amazing Peggy George, also from Arizona, from Phoenix. And then I've uh, taken the role of, of an organizer uh, with, with an admittedly much reduced role, uh, but still helping out. And uh, Peggy and I are, are assisting in different ways with the conference, uh, although we don't have strands. So that's kind of a little bit about our strands and our organizers. And Susan, I'm happy to continue talking, but just let me know because I can't I okay. can't see the it's notes as far as what. We're on to the teaser video from uh, that Karen made.
So Peggy, right. I think well, you're okay. Is I'm going to give this a try. Now, if you're on an iPad, you're not going to see the web tour. And lots of times, web tour doesn't work all that great for us. But what I'm going to do is start the web tour and play this short teaser, which you can see is only 55 minutes long. But you can also click on that link in the chat, which I'm a I'm going to place in here. And so if you're not seeing it in the web tour, you'll be able to see it um, in your browser. And it's also in the Live Binder. So cross your fingers. Here we go. Wes, can you mention the keynote speakers for each of the strands? You bet, Susan. I'd be glad to. <laughs> um, our uh, keynoters, it, I know we've got, a, it sounds like about half of the folks that, that haven't been in K-12 online before. And basically, each strand is, kick, is uh, kicked off by a keynote presentation. All of these are videos that are going to be posted this year for the first time on YouTube. We have posted them on some different video websites in the past, but on, on uh, each week we have two different strands. So um, the first week we're going to um, kick it off with open learning and both Steve Hargadon and Audrey Waters, who if you went to our ISTE conference this year, organized the Hack Education or Hack Ed uh, Day are going to be uh, opening up with, with that uh, keynote. There will be another presentation uh, in open learning as well. And then the second strand for week one is going to be outside learning. And so Kathy Cassidy, who is a wonderful um, kindergarten teacher from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, is going to kick that off. And Kathy has presented several times for K-12 Online and really continues to be a wonderful inspiration to so many teachers helping their students um, with their voice and you know being able to blog and being able to share their ideas. So each day of the conference, there'll be at least four presentations, two for each strand. And in some of the strands, um, we'll have you know a couple more. It kind of varies. Sometimes you know things come up and, and things happen. But generally, um, we'll have the you know the pre-conference keynote, which we'll talk about later. But we'll have um, you know four presentations per week. So it's a lot of information, and it really is you know, more than most people can digest and process during the week. But it, it creates some immediacy to take a look at, at these presentations and provide feedback. The second week is going to be leading learning uh, with Larry Ferlazzo. And if you don't follow Larry and his best of websites that he has, it's just one of the best places on the web and on the Internet to, you know, be learning about so many different great resources. And so he's going to be kicking off leading learning. And then lastly, uh, we have both Sylvia Martinez and Gary Steger, whose book, um, Invent, is uh, all about the maker movement and all about constructivist learning and how students should be building and making and creating. And um, I've been uh, starting to read their book actually in, in the last two weeks. And you know, have loved um, the excellent pedagogy lesson of what, what good instruction and, and instructivism, and then you know, looking at how that you know fits in with the maker movement and fits across the curriculum. So it's going to be really exciting to have those keynoters kick things off. But then, like I said, we'll have presentations posted each day as well. And we invite everyone, as you are hearing presentations, to leave comments. And this year you'll have the opportunity to leave comments on the blog, as you have in the past, but also leave comments on YouTube. And that's a, a really important part because that provides feedback to our presenters. And it also you know, makes this an interactive conference. It's, it's not uh, a live conference in the, in the same sense that the STEMx conference or the um, you know, educational reform symposium where everything is here in Blackboard Collaborate. This is going to be web posted video, but we've got the chance to asynchronously ask questions and interact. And so um, we certainly want to encourage everybody to do that as well as using Twitter 
to post about the conference and use the hashtag K12 Online 13 so that others can see those tweets and be able to join in that, that conversation and dialogue around these presentations. In addition to the keynotes for each of the strands, we have something a little different. A week before the conference goes live, we have a pre-conference keynote. And uh, Wes, can you tell us a little bit about this year's keynoter and her talk? Absolutely, Susan. Uh, Shannon Miller is a librarian in Van Meter, Iowa. And I had a chance to hear uh, Shannon at a one-to-one -one conference that Scott McLeod's group, Castle, helped organize and immediately knew that Shannon is just doing some phenomenally amazing things with students. Uh, the website they have for the library is the, Van, is the Van Meter Voice. And Shannon is one of the most connected librarians on the planet. And she is so filled with uh, ideas and project examples, and not just ways to help students create projects and share things online, but transformational ways to empower students to understand how social media can give them a voice and a purpose, and this whole idea of audience that many, many people in many schools are very, very fearful of, and the Van Meter schools, as they have gone one-to-one -one and just really moved headlong into the world of digital learning and digital literacy. Uh, I think they've been greatly blessed by Shannon and you know, other, other leaders and teachers to be guided in, in ways where you know, blogging is not a dirty word, where interaction and social media are tools that aren't just used outside of the classroom, but they're used every day in school to not only connect teachers, but to connect students as well. So Shannon is going to share her pre-conference keynote the first week, the week of October 14th. And what that does is it really gives us all an opportunity to take a look at that presentation and interact around it and just you know, get, get, get excited about the ideas and themes of the conference. Once the main conference begins, we'll be getting at least four presentations published per day. And that's a lot of content. So a challenge that I'm going to take on myself this year and that I would encourage you to consider would be to get some other teachers together face to face that week of the 14th. It'll be published on Monday. And watch it together and then reflect on it and create something that will enable, you know, both you to you know, more deeply reflect about your learning, but also share your learning. And through the years, we've had different groups um, do things they've called LAN parties. And um, some school districts have adopted K-12 online as a professional development day. And they've you know, used the videos. And of course, that doesn't have to happen during the actual conference. But that's something I'm going to try to do as far as getting some people together this year. I've wanted to do that for a long time. And uh, it's just a challenge that I would throw out there because uh, definitely, you know, there's all kinds of great presentations, um, but we can guarantee you that each one of our keynotes is going to be a presentation that you, you don't want to miss. And Shannon, I know, is going to do a wonderful job kicking us off. So how does a conference work? Uh, first thing to know is that it's free. And there are many, many online conferences that are free. So what's different about this one? Wes already talked about the fact that we have, uh, it's a two-week conference. We put four 20-minute, approximately, video presentations up each day for each of the two weeks during the week. Um, but the really important thing is that these presentations are available anytime, any place. Yes, in the other live conferences, uh, these sessions are recorded and archived, but they're really meant to be something where you participate online. It's, I love these sessions from Classroom 2.0, but I know when I participate online at the same time, it's more of an experience than when I watch the archives. The archives are great, 
but they serve a different purpose. Our archives really are the same as the live conference. And as Wes mentioned, they're the great PD, and what's important is the conversations that you can have around them. I know in the past I have invited people, and we've watched some presentations together, and talked about them. I've shared presentations in workshops that I've given as part of PD that I've been giving. And so they're bite-sized pieces. They're not hour-long sessions. And that makes a big difference, too. So free. They're there forever. And I know Paula put in the chat, you can go back and watch previous sessions from other years. And it's amazing how relevant many of those sessions still are. So if we can go on. And that's my cue to talk about the schedule for this year. Um, every year, we have a schedule for the conference. And it looks like this screenshot that's on the screen now, that's only part of the page. But <clears throat> what happens is that each day, as the uh, video recording goes live, those titles are hyperlinked. And so you can, this is the most important page for the conference. And you can, you should bookmark it, keep it really handy so that you can find it easily. And each morning, very early in the morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time and 5 a.m. Pacific Time, which is my time, those videos are uploaded. So as soon as you go to that schedule page, you'll see the sessions for that day hyperlinked. You click on that link, and you can watch the video. So I'm going to try to do um, some app sharing with you just for a minute to introduce you to the conference site. Um, it is, I'm going to put a link here in the chat. It's been shared earlier. And with application sharing, um, I'm going to <clears throat> take you to my browser. And if this works, um, I'm going to just show you where to find a few things. Lots of content on the site, but it's uh, not necessarily easy to find. So I'm going. This page that you're seeing right now is the home page, and I'm going to not dwell on these pages, because I want to get right back up to the top. You can see we've had some awesome teaser videos coming in. And a teaser is just a short, one minute, approximately, um, video created by the presenter to get you a little bit excited about the presentation that they're going to be doing. And as they come in, we keep posting them on the home page. Under all of these tabs, you'll see drop-down menus. Under 2013, you'll see a link that takes you straight to the teasers. And the next thing you see is the schedule. So if all you have is the main login link, if you go to the schedule link, <coughs> you should see that page that I have up on the slide. Mine is a little slow loading right now. So I don't want to take too long to do that. But there it comes for me. I, I hope that you're seeing that now. So each one of these um, titles will be hyperlinked on the day the presentation goes live. Another thing you can see is that under each year, you see the separate strands, the teasers, and the schedule. If you just click on the top link, that will take you to that schedule page that shows you all of the presentations that are hyperlinked with the recordings for that year. So that makes it really easy to navigate if you, if you use those top menu tabs. And later, I'm going to tell you about iTunes U and how you can subscribe to iTunes U to get all of these videos or audio recordings on your mobile device so you can take it with you wherever you like. So with that, I'm going to <clears throat> go back to 
stop sharing and take us back to the slides. Very slow loading for me. All right. Well, it looks like that's my next cue. <laughs> On the right-hand menu in the a conference page, I'm not going to bring it up again because I don't want to lose any time, but you'll see two collections to subscribe to iTunes U. One is a video collection and one is audio. So if you don't have a smartphone, you can still listen to the presentations, although since they are recorded videos, you do miss out on a lot if you're only hearing the audio. But you have both options available to you. And all of the instructions for subscribing to the K-12 um, iTunes U collections are right there on that link. And I will also drop those links in the chat for you so that it makes it really easy for you. They are also in the live binder. So I would get that set up in advance of the conference so that you are ready to go and download those the day that they're uploaded. So I'm going to talk now about the open learning strand, which I'm um, convening. And I'm really excited about this strand of the conference. Those of you who know me know that I'm very passionate about open learning. So in this strand, we're going to be looking at a variety of topics around openness, transparency, collaboration, um, inclusiveness, and sharing. And as Wes mentioned, our keynote speakers for this strand are Steve Hargadon and Audrey Waters. And they are just fabulous uh, speakers and thinkers. And we're excited about having them as a part of this. Um, just to give you a short preview of some of the sessions that we'll have as a part of this strand, we're going to have presentations on open badges. Um, we're, we have a couple sessions on collaborative writing. Um, we have a couple sessions on open professional development, um, as well as sessions on Creative Commons and open educational resources, and just lots more open goodness. So lots of good things in store, and the, the, it'll be the week of October 21st to 25th for this strand. And again, you can watch these sessions at any point. They'll be posted on the website. And I'm going to turn it over to, I think, Susan for the next strand. Uh, yep. The, uh, let me just advance a slide. Our keynote for open outside learning is Kathy Cassidy. And when I think of outside learning, it's taking the inside out and the outside in. So. How do you, what do you do when you bring your students outside your classroom physically into the community? And what, how do you bring the outside world into your classroom? Kathy, uh, I remember watching a video of hers when she was just starting. And she was this very tentative teacher with technology. She's written a book recently called Global Learning in the Primary Grades. And a lot of what she's going to be talking about is just that. How Although she lives in the, not the largest city in Saskatchewan, her students have access to people from as far away as Australia. And they really learn from outside their classroom as well as in. Other um, sessions in the Strand will include uh, sessions on blogging, uh, learning about science through a QR scavenger hunt, Skype chats, photography for all, including those with visual challenges and other exceptionalities. Uh, it's really quite a variety, both of people who are bringing the outside in and bringing their students outside their classrooms. So, and I'm excited to see that we actually have a couple of the presenters in the uh, chat today, and you'll be hearing from at least one later. Hi, 
Hi, uh, I'm Ginger Lubin, and I'm going to go ahead and talk to us uh, a little bit about the next two strands. Uh, one of this first one is leading learning. And as Wes had mentioned earlier, uh, this is actually uh, Jose Rodriguez's strand, and he's unable to be with us today. But uh, this strand is exciting because it's looking at leading the transformation of learning and how it isn't just only in the hands of administrators, that leading learning is also in the hands of teachers and students. And we're looking at it from all different points of view. Some of the um, sessions that are in this particular topic, now let me find that part uh, open there. OK. In the uh, leading learning, is uh, there's one in particular um, from V. Page Hale, where she's talking uh, from, she's from Kentucky, and talks about leading by example and harnessing the internet to promote professional growth and lifelong learning, where um, we're going to take a look at one particular educational professional's ongoing journey as a lifelong learner. So she's going to show us all sorts of open courseware and, and webinars and listservs and ways we can continue learning beyond just the K-12 online conference and uh, Classroom 2.0 Live. Uh, other sessions, we've got uh, the always super fun Brad Wade and Drew Minock are going to be coming in from Michigan talking about game-changing apps. And you might be familiar with those guys that are known as better as the, the two guys and some iPads group. And they're always just a fun group to listen to. Uh, gosh, there's so many in this. Uh, I guess there's so many in each um, strand. Another, Betsy Hanger is going to be uh, coming in from Los Angeles. And she's talking to us about Mindfulness and Neuroscience, How a Contemplative Curriculum Improves Focus, Connectedness, and Self-Regulation. And so she's going to look at using mindfulness training in the elementary classroom. And, and I love that because it's helping kids to be leading learning as well as uh, teachers. You can see another one I'll point out here, Julie Austin. Julia Austin is coming in from Lewisburg, Tennessee. And she talks about the promise of leadership. And considering the roles of teachers and students, uh, uh, teachers and students as it relates to educational transformation, I I just get really excited. I know that this isn't officially my strand, but I love whenever we talk about uh, people beyond just administrators as being leaders, because really, if we just put it on the, the role or on the shoulders of our administrators, change doesn't happen just there. And of course, getting kicked off with Larry Falazzo, I mean, how can we make anything better than that? So. So fun. Um, looking forward to the leading learning. I, I don't know how to move us on to the next slide. So if I, if somebody can help me out with that, awesome. Thank you. It's magic, I tell you. Uh, the, <laughs> the next strand is my uh, love and passion, and that's uh, building learning. And I, I do a lot with project-based learning. And when this book, um, Invent to Learn, from Sylvia Martinez and Gary Steger came out, I, I fell all over myself to buy it and read it, and it's the research that that we all want to do that's really hard to do as we are also uh, building with the kids. So I appreciate them jumping right in to do this. Uh, the Building Learning Strand also <clears throat> has some amazing things going on. Carol Bruce is actually in our session today, and I don't want to take any of her uh, thunder, but uh, I don't know if she's going to be able to share and talk with us about her session, so I'll leave that to the side. Um, we're going to have people from all across the world. Chris Betcha is going to be in here. Betcha Boy, you might know him from uh, Sydney, Australia. And he's going to be talking about coding for kids and building uh, through uh, learning how to code. And what is it that they call that the new superpower is learning how to code? And Dan Whistler is a guy from Kansas, uh, actually my hometown here near Hutchinson. And he's going to talk about Energy 101. Uh, making connections by combining STEM and PBL. And he's going to show how he uses wind tunnels and wind turbines to really get kids involved in learning and building um, some amazing work. Uh, and um, yeah, <laughs> with, the builder, with the building movement sort of thing. Uh, Vinny Vratney and uh, part, his partner Cheryl Peterson are coming in from Palatine, Illinois. They're going to be talking about STEAM. And I know they just started a new Team Maker program up there this year in their school. Um, and they're going to talk and share about the learning they've had uh, with their students about creating a maker culture. And they're going to talk about it from the lower grade or early childhood classroom areas uh, and ages. And um, it, that's just going to be.
be fun to take a look at. And I know there's just so many I could go through every single one, and I'm just not going to. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause there. Uh, so yeah, every year I've, do, I've been doing this K-12 online conference now. Is it three years or four years? It seems like forever. And this year has is really every single strand get me so super excited about that transformative learning. So thanks. Uh, before we look at this teaser, I want to talk about the enthusiasm of our presenters. A lot of the presenters that you've seen so far, some are very seasoned presenters, many are classroom teachers, and that to me is, is really one of the strengths of the conference too. After being accepted as a presenter, Joanne uh, contacted me. I hope you don't mind my telling the story, Joanne, but she had never done anything like this before. Could I give her some technical help? After a few emails back and forth, she was off and running, and hers was the first teaser we received. Um, I told this story partly to say that those of you in the audience here who are classroom teachers and who are doing wonderful things, we do help when it comes to your first time presenting. And uh, anybody can do this, because you all have so much to share. So Peggy, if you could start the teaser. That's just a teaser. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to seeing the rest. Before Joanne speaks, um, just want to mention that uh, all these presenters put a huge amount of time into presenting things. And uh, I think it's just amazing what they do. Joanne, can you take the mic and tell us a little bit about your presentation? Sure. I'm Joanne Delaney, and I'm from Hershey, Pennsylvania, as you saw from the video. And I was very excited to get involved. Um, Karen uh, Fassenbar actually was one of my principals previously. So I had a great leader um, you know, guiding me to this when I saw that she had uh, tweeted it. And I wanted to kind of assimilate all of the self-directed learning that I did over the summer, which was using a lot of the various new technology, the apps, and the cutting edge things that I was seeing uh, other educators talking about on the um, uh, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter sphere. And so I decided that as I was jogging one day and I saw a bird box that I could kind of assimilate and have the students in my classroom use the science and actually do a project where they could share their learning all around the world by app smashing. So we started out with taking a pic a picture of something science related either in their yard, in their neighborhood, or in our uh, amazing uh, town. And uh, the students, this was the, the assignment the very first day of school, and they were excited to use their devices. So they came back with their, uh, the, their pictures, and then from there, they started to um, create uh, GPS QR codes and using side-by-side -side apps and then uh, creating an EduCreation screencast where they took research that they did uh, to learn a little bit further about uh, what they thought they knew about the science in their picture. And then from there, we really were just trying to take and put it into some 
format where we could send out one map and other kids around the world could be able to tap into any of the areas on the map to hear our kids teaching them about the science in our unique town. So I went in two directions. One was the Google Maps. And uh, when you click on one of the uh, tags in that map, it takes you to the students uh, teaching it. And then, of course, they can go to Street View and see the location. And then the other piece was the um, augmented reality, which I'm just fascinated by. And we used our Dairy Township map. And from there, they ended up taking and um, being able to scan it with the Layer app. And uh, all of our you know, education screencasts magically appear, and um, you can click into each one and learn so much um, from my students. So the first two weeks of school, this was definitely a very uh, ambitious uh, project. Um, but we immediately created a class culture because the kids were out of their seats and they were helping each other and they were learning from each other and um, I was learning from them as well. We would problem solve together each step of the way and there definitely were, you know, some technical issues with making sure that, you know, we're um, able to look at each other's things by making sure that we're either sharing them publicly or at least if they have the link. So there were some glitches the first time through and um, you know certainly I would rework you know different pieces of it but we're so thrilled with the outcome of the project and the opportunities to really have kids anywhere around the world interact with you know what we've created. So I'm not sure if you have anything else that you want me to share, but I'm going to turn the mic back over to all of you. Thanks. That was amazing, Joanne, and, and really an example of transformative. <laughs> that does not sound like the classroom I grew up in, nor the classrooms that exist in far too many schools still. Just fantastic. I'm going to turn the mic over next to uh, Karen, who's going to talk about PD. And actually, before I do that, I want to give an opportunity to Carol just to say a few words about her presentation if she has mic capability and can do that. I'm on. <laughs> um, oh, I'm really excited to be with the K-12 online conference. I think it is such a powerful conference where um, we can put our best work up and really show off. And I just love all the classroom uh, teacher stuff. Um, I'm doing it on um, triple threat. I'm being a triple threat where you have to be able to do all your own um, making music. I'm a poor music teacher and draw and take pictures and create movies. And um, my, my hope is that people become triple threats where they become uh, threats to, I don't want, it, it's sort of a bad term, I guess, but that's used in so many different um, venues, um, where they do all their own stuff. Um, and then their modeling will then inspire other um, students. So um, that's sort of my. Uh, my mantra. I'm interviewing a lot of different professors and teachers and uh, people to, to um, push themselves a little bit harder. So I'm excited about this conference. Like I said, it's one of my, I, I love it. I think it's just so powerful. So thanks. Just let me talk for a few minutes. <laughs> thanks so much, Carol and Joanne and all our presenters. We really just have an amazing team of people. Um, so I want to talk just for a minute about um, the K-12 online conference in terms of professional development. And one of the themes, um, somebody just posted a link to Connected Educator Month. And as most of you probably know, this is Connected Educator Month. And there is just a lot of great activity um, going on across the web around that. And one of the themes for Connected Educator Month this year is the connections between informal and formal learning for teachers and how we can get credit, um, formal credit, for all of this wonderful informal professional learning that, that many of us are doing on our own time. And I think K-12 online is a great um, way that this can be accomplished because the content on the K-12 online conference is really um, suitable for a wide variety of uses from individual informal professional learning all the way through formal professional learning. And some of the ways that um, districts in the past have used K-12 online conference content is with district professional development um, uh, workshops or conferences um, through 
um, weekly discussion groups around different K-12 online videos, and even local conferences that have had sessions that start with a video and then move into discussion groups, which I think is a really um, powerful way to use the content. Um, one thing about the, the videos on the conference um, that hasn't been mentioned is that they're all Creative Commons licensed, which means they're all open content. You can use them, remix them, um, and redistribute them however you like. And I know for myself, I do a lot of online professional development, and I've used sessions from K-12 online in online uh, workshops that I've done, and there's just a lot of great resources there. Um, the page that you're looking at on the screen is our professional development screen, which if you go to our website, it's in the, there's a link in the upper right-hand corner. And we do offer um, CPE uh, professional ed credits and a certificate, which you can take um, to your district and just depend depending on your district guidelines, um, potentially get formal credit for that. And those pages um, will have updates on that um, for this year's conference. So lots of different ways you can use this content, um, both formally and informally, to move ahead um, your own professional learning. And again, there's more information on all this on the website. Uh, Wes, do you want to talk okay. about how people can get involved? Yes, I certainly will, Susan. I saw uh, Peggy's chat there too. So I just put into the chat actually that helping to get more teachers involved in K-12 online you know, should be a goal for, for all of us. Um, as I think Paula tweeted or you know, texted in, in the chat, if you're here, you're a connected educator. I mean, you're here on a Saturday. It's not required. You know, you're already a connected educator um, to a large degree, but there are so many teachers who have not participated in an online learning experience. So simply sharing the conference face-to-face -face with other educators you know is, is a big way um, for you to be involved and to get others involved and to participate together. We want you to spread the word. There is a PDF flyer that, yes, we'd encourage you to print and you know, put that up on bulletin boards, um, share that with, with other teachers, definitely uh, emailing links. Um, maybe, I mean, for the whole conference, but as you find a specific presentation this year that, and you think of somebody you know, oh my gosh, so and so, they've got to see this, you know, sharing that. We have the hashtag K12 Online 13, and that, that uh, will be used throughout the conference to amplify the conversation. Uh, we'll be retweeting that from the conference Twitter account as well as from our own accounts. I would encourage you to, to basically put a search in. If you're not using some kind of a Twitter application uh, like Hootsuite or Echo Fawn or there's you know, different apps for smartphones and, and things, uh, you, you'll save that search and throughout the conference and then in the weeks you know, following, um, but especially during the conference, follow that hashtag. Um, in addition to watching the presentations, we encourage you to comment. And, and you know, in our day of Twitter and social media, I think commenting has in many ways become, uh, co comments are more rare than they, they might have been, say, five years ago or so. And it really can mean a lot to presenters to get feedback and to, to have them know that the hours they put into their presentation, you know, were, it was worth it because people connected with them and their ideas. So leaving comments um, on the conference blog would be great, and then also on uh, the YouTube videos, which we'll have, and then subscribing with iTunes U. Um, that's one of the things that you know, Peggy George has really taken the lead on in the past few years is getting every one of our videos not only in video format but also in an audio format for folks that are commuters or just need a lower bandwidth, you know, smaller file size to be able to download. And so subscribe to iTunes U to our channel. We want to do a shout out to the Arizona K-12 Center because they provide the um, space for us to be able to do that inside our channel. 
and then sharing your own reflections and comments and questions on your blog. Um, it's, this isn't a, a, a conference where you know the conversations are happening you know just in one place and, and they're password protected. This is an open, free conference for anyone in the world. And we want to be amplifying these ideas. So post this on your blog, use the hashtag, provide a link back on our blog, you know, back to yours. Um, the conversations happen in a lot of places, and that can be challenging, but at the same time, we hope it will be empowering because so many participants in K-12 online have experienced the power of open sharing and open publishing through their involvement with this conference. And it's just, it's been one of those real aha moment generating events year after year for a lot of different people. So we hope it will be that way for you again this year, and we hope you'll share it with others, and that we'll, we'll be inspired. And as you've heard about the lineup of presenters, it's going to be basically impossible to not be inspired by the amazing presenters that are sharing this year, and just don't keep it to yourself. Share it with other teachers, um, share it with your PLN, and encourage others to get involved. On this slide is where we usually take questions, and I have been looking hard in the chat for questions and only saw one that Peggy answered early on. So if you have a question for the, the group of presenters today, you can type them in chat, or if you'd rather get on the mic, we can try, you can try asking them on the mic. I'll, I'll throw a question to, uh, to Karen really quick. Karen, what have you found to be the most challenging part of being an organizer for K-12? Well, I don't, that's a good question. Um, I don't know that I found anything really challenging, but it, I just think it's been a great experience. And a few people in the chat said they'd like to get more involved with K-12 online. And I, I just would really encourage people to um, think about, if you haven't presented, present next year, or think about um, possibly being an organizer or helping us spread the word. Because it's really such a, um, it's such a great team, but we can always use more help. And this was my first year on the committee. Um, last year I presented. It's just been a great experience. It's a wonderful group of people. And it's really, um, it's an event that I really, believe in, and particularly um, because of those connections with informal and formal learning, I think that's so important um, for us as educators to make more of those connections. And that's what K-12 Online is all about. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of it. Well, we appreciate you joining our team. And Dr. Thomas Ho has a question about subscribing to iTunes U with Android. To my knowledge, you can't. However, you can definitely subscribe to not only the conference blog, and you can, um, there are individual categories, I guess, but we've got the, the overall feed. But with YouTube this year, um, you know, you can subscribe to our channel. And so at this point, my best suggestion would be to subscribe in YouTube to the K-12 online, you know, YouTube channel. Um, does, is, if anybody else knows how to subscribe to iTunes U from Android, let me know. But to my knowledge, it's not possible. There's not iTunes is not available for for Android, and I'm not thinking that Apple is going to make it available. So that is one one issue. But we've it's why we publish the content in multiple places. We've never said you have to have this device, you have to have this platform, and so um, you know it's uh, the iTunes U is a, is a great thing for iOS users. But we've always been publishing things uh, openly. And um, we'll make the RSS feed, you know, for our YouTube videos available, so that in case you'd like to use your aggregator for, um, you know, for video podcasts, that you'll you'd be able to do that in your Android device. One thing I'd like to add is, uh, it's great to watch the videos. The one thing that the blog. Uh, adds to that is you can learn a bit more about the presenter and also see any links that they have to whatever they uh, feel would be important uh, when watching your, their session, whether it's to other websites, to their own website, etc. And the, uh, the blog, the K-12 online blog, and also gives you the twi Twitter handle for people, so that way it's easy for you to start to follow the people who have inspired you. I did see a question 
go by. Um, we have so much info, tools, activities to choose from. I need, a, I need a strand on how to decide on what K-12 online tools to use in my, in my classroom. Is there any strand that helps teachers create strategies on what to use? I'll field that. We've, uh, we've had in the past usually a beginner strand and then an intermediate advanced strand. And this year the organizer team made the decision to, to, to be more thematic. So that's a really good question and it, and it could be, um, we're, we, we have now with YouTube the opportunity to make playlists and something we've had some dialogue in the past about was, was making some playlists. But um, to, we, don't, we don't have a beginner strand at this point. Um, but you know, K-12 online has always evolved from the community, and so that's a suggestion that we can you know consider and brainstorm. And if if there's a way you can think of that we could you know better meet um, uh, newbie needs uh, as far as folks who are new to the conference, um, we definitely would recommend that folks check out the Getting Started link that's on our website, and we're trying to provide you know some good uh, introductory materials so people we'll know where to start. I guess my, my last thing would be start with the keynotes. You know, starting with the keynotes in each strand is really the probably the best idea. And then, um, you know, taking a look at, at the titles and what seems to, to grab your attention uh, to, to go from there. Thanks, Wes. Those were the few questions I, I saw. Are there any others? Okay, Peggy, thanks. Um, we're going to wrap up the show and then come back if there are questions. These are the upcoming um, talks that Steve Hargadon is conducting on October 16th with Denise Pope on Challenge Success, October 23rd with Susie Boss, October 25th with Jamie McMillan on Legendary Learning, the the famous homeschooler's guide to self-directed excellence. And the upcoming Saturday Classroom 2.0 live shows are these. We don't have another show until October 18th to 19th. Next week, October 12th, there's no show for, for the Reform Symposium. And on October 19th, that's the Library 2.013 Worldwide Virtual Conference. The, also that weekend, the 18th and the 19th, is also the Den Fall Virtual Conference. And our next show is the October 26th featured teacher, Linda Rood, who is a primary grade teacher as well as a tech coordinator. This is the information about the Reform Symposium, and Peggy's going to take over. I'm going to jump on just for a couple of minutes here, because I am so excited about these upcoming conferences. The Reform Symposium is the next conference online for us, and it is next weekend. It is actually um, October 11th to the 13th, so it's three days. And there are presenters from around the world, and all of them were specifically invited to present. It is just going to be awesome. And the kickoff um, keynote speaker for that conference is Sugat Dimitra, and I know lots of you know him. So um, that link is in our live binder, and when I finish talking, I can drop it in the chat too. But be sure to check that out. It's all in Blackboard Collaborate. So you go to the schedule, and you click on the link for the session you want to participate in, and uh, everything will be recorded. There are five sessions in every hour, so you can't possibly get to all of them, so you're going to want to go back and view the recordings. 
The next thing I want to just say a word about is the Den Fall Virtual Conference. It's always excellent. It is just a one-day event. It is Saturday, October 19th, and you uh, can log in for any or all of it. There are many face-to-face -face sessions. I'm going to actually hold one in my own house and invite people from around my area in Arizona to come together and watch the sessions together. I'm also really excited that I get to be a presenter for the conference this year and will be presenting, um, co-presenting with Kim Thomas in Arizona. And we're going to share a great model that we've used to teach the teachers about live binders using students as the trainers. So that's October 19th, 9 to 4 Eastern Time. And finally, Karen mentioned something about the Connected Educators website. There are so many things going on there. You've got to follow Pound CE13 to try and keep up with all of it. And one thing I specifically want to mention to you is the nightly interviews that Steve Hargan and is doing called Connected um, Educator Month Cafe. And he has invited amazing online heroes to come into the cafe every weeknight and they share their passions. It's a very informal gathering. It's not a presentation. It's a conversation. But it's a great chance for you to log into collaborate, get to know them, ask them questions, and they have questions to ask you. So it's very interactive. And in each session, uh, Tom DeBoer will be on there to announce the upcoming events that will be happening the next day or two. So it's a great way to get a little preview. So check that out, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. And Lori, back to you. Thanks, Peggy. This slide is a reminder to uh, nominate a featured teacher to present on one of our shows. And that form is given at the link uh, tinyurl.com slash cr20live featured teacher nominate, but you don't have the E at the end. Peggy's posted the link in the chat as well. And you can also nominate yourself for a feature teacher as well, so not just other colleagues. Also, when you leave the session, uh, you will be directed to the Classroom 2.0 Live survey, and the link is on this slide as well. It should automatically open up in your default browser. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the link is in the, the chat box as well. Or if you are watching the recording, uh, you can also fill out the survey uh, from the, the link in the, the recordings chat. Also, that link is in the live binder. So for any, any live binder for Classroom 2.0 creates, uh, the survey link is in the, the live binder as well. And within that, you can request the PD certificate uh, from in, within the survey. But please make sure that your email address is not your school address. Sometimes the school address blocks something like the, the survey request. Here's the certificate of the, the PD certificate that I mentioned in the last slide. Um, this is in the survey. You can uh, request this from the survey. Be careful of typing your email address in the block uh, because typos, of course, are not going to allow the, the request to go through. And there are, uh, there's also a direct link to get to the survey for the PD certificate. Uh, this is at the bottom of the survey itself. Um, the archives of the Classroom 2.0 Live shows are available from a video collection and an audio collection in iTunes U. Uh, and the link for that is on this slide, tinyurl.com slash CR2O Live iTunes U. So there are two versions of the collections that you can subscribe to. And here 
is a screenshot of the Weebly website for Classroom 2 Live with the RSS feed highlighted. You can actually get an RSS feed uh, compilation of past show archives as well as looking at the archives within the website itself. We want to thank our special guests, Karen Fassenpour, Ginger Lumen, Susan Von Gelder, Peggy George, and Wes Fryer, uh, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and Web 2.0 Labs Project, Weebly.com for, for providing our website, and uh, everyone who has participated in today's show. And of course, as well, to Blackboard Collaborate for providing the platform where we can meet. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to close the show now. And if you do have questions, and if some of the presenters can stick around, we can address those.